This is a basic nursing skills practice test. This test is designed to help nursing students prepare for the CNA licensing exam. The questions are based on basic nursing skills that are typically tested on the exam. Each question includes an explanation of the correct answer. Let's get started. 1. Which of the factors impact on a person's grief? A. Culture and spiritual beliefs. B. Age and gender. C. Race and age. D. Gender and culture. Correct answer, A. Culture and spiritual beliefs. Spiritual beliefs and culture impact on one's grief and grieving. 2. What type of care focuses on the support and comfort of the dying person and family, with the goal of facilitating a peaceful and dignified death? A. Hospice care. B. Hospital care. C. Rehabilitation care. D. Restorative care. Correct answer, A. Hospice care. Hospice care is based on holistic concepts and it focuses on the quality of life and comfort, rather than a cure. It supports the client and family through the dying process. 3. Palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life for patients and their families facing the problems associated with a. Chicken pox b. The flu c. The end of life d. Insomnia Correct answer, c. The end of life Palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life for patients and their families facing the problems associated with the end of life. It is sometimes referred to as comfort care. For CNAs assist clients who are dying in order to enable a peaceful death and to maintain self-confidence, dignity, and a self-worth. B. Morality. C. Pleasure. D. Beauty. Correct answer, A. Self-worth. CNAs assist clients who are dying in order to enable a peaceful death and to maintain self-confidence, dignity and self-worth, or self-esteem. These are end-of-life needs. 5. A underscore cares for the body post-mortem and arranges for funerals, burials and cremations. A. Minister. B. Mortician. C. Orlang. D. Orthodnisht. Correct answer, B. Mortician. A mortician, also referred to as an undertaker, is a person trained in the care of the dead. 6. You are working in the pediatric unit. A young child suddenly starts violently jerking. The child also appears to be having difficulty breathing. This child is most likely having a a. respiratory arrest b. cardiac arrest c. seizure d. apneic event Correct answer, c. seizure. These signs indicate that the child is having a grand mal seizure. The CNA must remain with the child and call out for help from the nurse. A respiratory arrest happens when breathing stops, not when breathing is difficult, dyspnea. A cardiac arrest is when the heart stops and apnea is a temporary and brief stopping of breathing, particularly during sleep. 7. Identify the developmental task with the correct age group. A. Infancy, autonomy. B. Toddler, initiative. C. Preschool child, trust. D. School age child, industry. Correct answer, D. School age child, industry. The developmental task for the school age child is industry. The infant's developmental task is trust and the toddler's developmental task is autonomy. The developmental task for the preschool child is initiative. 8. Your 47-year-old patient is concerned about guiding the next generation. What developmental task is this 47-year-old patient addressing? A. Generativity. B. Initiative. C. Industry. D. Ego integrity. Correct answer, A. Generativity. The patient is addressing the developmental task of generativity. 
The other developmental tasks for the other age groups are below. Initiative, preschool child industry, school age child ego integrity, elderly. Nine, the term used to describe the study of aging and older adults is A. Ageism B. Gerontology C. Gerontophobia D. Eldertology Correct answer, B. Gerontology Gerontology is the study of aging and older adults. Many people in nursing, psychology, social work and other fields specialize in the area of gerontology. 10. Mr. Flores is a 47-year-old man who notices that he has recently started to have difficulty reading and seeing clearly objects that are close to his face. For example, he is not able to clearly read a newspaper. This decrease in vision is a. A normal physical change associated with middle years adults. b. A normal physical change associated with young adults. c. An abnormal physical change associated with middle years adults. d. An abnormal physical change associated with young adults. Correct answer, a. A normal physical change associated with middle years adults. This visual change is a normal physical change associated with middle years adults, which is defined as from 45 to 65 years of age. 11. Which of the following diseases, or disorders, is acute? A. Pneumonia B. Paralysis C. Alzheimer's disease D. Diabetes Correct answer, A. Pneumonia Pneumonia is an acute disorder, or illness. It is temporary. It comes on quickly and it can be cured. All of the other choices are chronic diseases or disorders. They are permanent, but they can be treated. 12. Your patient has been confused for years. Your patient can be best described as a patient with a chronic underscore disorder. A. Physical. B. Psychotic. C. Thinking. D. Palliative. Correct answer, C. Thinking. Patients who have long-term confusion are suffering from a chronic thinking, or cognitive, disorder. Alzheimer's disease is an example of a disorder that leads to long-term confusion and memory loss. CNAs and nursing assistants very often care for people with chronic thinking problems. 13. CNAs and nursing assistants are permitted to work in which of the following areas as long as they stay within their scope of practice and not beyond their limitations? a. Intensive care units b. Research data analysis c. Environmental statistics d. Public health law Correct answer, a. Intensive care units CNAs and nursing assistants are permitted to work in intensive care units, emergency rooms, and all other areas of a hospital, as long as they stay within their scope of practice and not beyond their limitations. Research, data analysis, environment research, statistics, and public health are not within the scope of practice for a CNA. 14. One major difference between long term care and respite centers is the fact that long term care facilities a. Provide only physical care and respite centers give both physical and emotional care. b. Provide care for residents on a long-term basis and respite centers offer only outpatient services. c. Provide care for residents on a long-term basis and respite centers offer only temporary services. d. There is no difference. Long-term care and respite care are the same. Correct answer, C. Provide care for residents on a long-term basis and respite centers offer only temporary services. The major difference between long-term care and respite centers is the fact that long-term care facilities provide both physical and emotional care on an ongoing, long-term, basis. On the other hand, respite care centers provide these same services but on a short-term, or temporary, basis so family members can have time off from their daily caregiver role. 15. CNAs and nursing aides can work in home care. a. Only when the RN is also in the home. 
B. Only when an RN or LPN is in the home. C. Only with elderly patients or residents. D. Only under the supervision of the nurse. Correct answer. D. Only under the supervision of the nurse. CNAs and nursing assistants can work in a home without the presence of a nurse, but always under the supervision of a nurse. They can also work with all age groups within the home. 16. You are working as a CNA in hospice. What types of patients are you caring for? A. Children with birth defects. B. Troubled youth and teenagers. C. Toddlers who need surgery. D. People at the end of life. Correct answer. D. People at the end of life. Hospice care provides comfort care to people who are terminally ill and at the end of life. 17. Diabetic patients are more prone to underscore than other people without this chronic disorder. A. Infection. B. Increased oxygen saturation. C. Low fibrinogen. D. Constipation. Correct answer. A. Infection. Diabetic patients are more prone to infection than other people without this chronic disorder. Diabetes has no direct impact on the other disorders above. 18. You are taking care of an 85-year-old woman who has been complaining about stiff joints and pain in her joints. What physical problem must be prevented with this patient? A. Anxiety. B. Infections. C. Fractures. D. Confusion. Correct answer. C. Fractures. The age of this patient, 85, her gender, female, and her complaints of stiffness and pain indicate that she has osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis, the most common type of arthritis, is a degenerative bone disorder that affects mostly women after menopause. This woman must be protected in order to prevent fractures. 19. A complication of osteoporosis is a. Rheumatoid arthritis. B. Gouty arthritis. C. Dorsal flexion. D. Joint deformity. Correct answer. D. Joint deformity. Joint deformity is a complication of osteoporosis. Gout and rheumatoid arthritis are other types of arthritis. Dorsiflexion is not a complication of osteoporosis. It is part of the range of motion for the foot. 20. One of the complications of complete bed rest and immobility is which of the following? A. Plantar flexion. B. Dorsal flexion. C. Extension contractures. D. Adduction contractures. Correct answer. A. Plantar flexion. Plantar flexion, or foot drop, is a complication of complete bed rest and immobility. Dorsal flexion is when you move your foot upwards. Contractures can also occur as a complication of complete bed rest and immobility. However, these contractions are flexion, not extension or adduction contractures. 21. Plantar flexion can be prevented with A. Foot soaks B. Foot boards C. Toenail care. D. Proper shoes. Correct answer. B. Footboards. Plantar flexion, or foot drop, can be prevented with footboards, special splints, and range of motion exercises. 22. A grease fire breaks out in the nursing home kitchen. What type of fire extinguisher should you use? A. A. B. B. C. C. D. D. Correct answer. B. B. Grease fires, oil fires, and gas fires can be extinguished with a B fire extinguisher. 23. Match the type of fire and the appropriate fire extinguisher. A. Grease. D. B. Electric. B. C. Paper. D. D. Wood A. Correct answer. D. Wood A. A fire extinguisher can only be used to put out fires on some common things like paper and wood. 
AB fire extinguisher can be used to put out fires on liquids and gases like gas, oil, and grease. It can be used on kitchen grease and fat fires. It cannot be used on electrical fires. A C-type fire extinguisher must be used to put out electrical fires. There is no type D fire extinguisher. 24. You have an annual contract with a home care patient. You should change the batteries and the smoke alarms underscore so you do not forget to do it. A. Once a year on New Year's Day. B. On the same holiday every other year. C. With each time change. D. On the first day of every month. Correct answer. C. With each time change. You should change the batteries at least two times a year on a date that is easy to remember. It is easy to remember the two times during the year that the clock moves ahead and moves back one hour. It is not necessary to do this every month. 25. You are ready to use a fire extinguisher to put out a grease fire in your home care patient's kitchen. You should aim the fire extinguisher where? A. At the base of the fire. B. At the top of the flames. C. Near the kitchen entry. D. Near the ceiling. Correct answer, A. At the base of the fire. You must aim the nozzle of the fire extinguisher at the base, or the bottom, of the fire in order to successfully extinguish the flames. 26. One of the environmental risk factors associated with infection is A. Noise. B. Interruptions. C. Close living. D. Antibiotic abuse. Correct answer, C. Close living. Close living in our hospital and nursing home environments place people at risk for infection. It also is a risk factor associated with the spread of infection. Noise and interruptions are environmental factors, but they have no impact on infections or the spread of infection. Antibiotic abuse has an impact on the severity and treatment of infections, but it is not an environmental risk factor associated with infection and the spread of infection. It is a patient-related risk factor. 27. A local sign of infection is which of the following? It. Swelling. B. Rapid pulse. C. Fever. D. High white blood count. Correct answer. It, swelling. The signs and symptoms of infection can be local and systemic, or body-wide and more diffuse. Some of the local signs of infection include swelling, heat, pain, and redness near the area. 28. A systemic sign of infection is it, swelling. B. Redness. C. Heat. D. A lack of appetite. Correct answer, D, a lack of appetite. The signs and symptoms of infection can be local and systemic, or body-wide and more diffuse. Some of the systemic signs of infection include a loss of appetite, rapid pulse, fever, and a high white blood count. 29. The single most important thing that all healthcare workers can do in order to prevent the spread of infection is A. Following standard precautions. B. Proper hand washing. C. Using gloves. D. Isolating patients. Correct answer. B. Proper hand washing. Proper hand washing is the single most important thing that you can do in order to prevent the spread of infection. Standard precautions, the use of gloves when needed, and isolation when needed also prevent the spread of infection, but hand washing is the single most important thing that you can do to prevent the spread of infection. 30. Infections are a serious problem in healthcare because infections are a. Costly. b. Not avoidable. c. Constant. d. Unpredictable. Correct answer, a. Costly. Infections are a serious problem in healthcare. The consequences of infections are numerous and severe. Infections are costly, they cause pain and suffering for patients and residents, they increase lengths of stay, and they decrease the quality of life. 
many infections are avoidable and predictable. For example, when you go from patient to patient and render care without hand washing before and after each patient contact, you have potentially spread an avoidable infection. We can predict that infections will occur when proper hand washing is not done. 31. A CNA answers the phone at the nursing station. The caller states that they are a friend of Mrs. T and they ask how she is doing. The CNA tells the caller about Mrs. T without determining that Mrs. T does not want her medical information shared with the caller. The CNA has a. violated the law b. acted correctly c. hurt autonomy d. helped Mrs. T Correct answer, a. violated the law HIPAA is a law that mandates confidentiality and patient privacy. The CNA has violated the HIPAA law when discussing any patient-related information without the consent of the patient. 32. A standard of care tells you a. about the scope of CNA practice b. state laws that affect CNAs c. what you must minimally do d. All the steps of a procedure. Correct answer, C, what you must minimally do. Standards of care tell us the minimal, critical steps that must be done in order to give safe and appropriate care. For example, a standard of care can describe what you must minimally do if they see that a person has just fallen to the floor. The nursing assistant should call for help, stay with the person and look at the person to see if they were hurt when they fall. If you do not do these things, you have not followed a standard of care. 33. Where can you find scopes of practice for nurses, doctors, and nursing assistants? A. In state rules. B. In state laws. C. Hospital procedure manuals. D. Hospital policy manuals. Correct answer. B. In state laws. State laws contain the scopes of practice for nurses, doctors, nursing assistants and other healthcare workers. 34. A CNA who does not give care with the same level of skill that they learned in school can be found guilty of underscore when this leads to an injury or damage to the person. a. Negligence b. Malpractice c. Unprofessional conduct d. Beneficence Correct answer, B, malpractice. CNAs can be found guilty of malpractice when they do something seriously wrong and it leads to patient injury. For example, when you do not wash your hands between patients and one of your patients gets a serious infection, you can be found guilty of malpractice. 35. Negligence occurs when a CNA does which of the following? A, does not do something that they should have done. B. Does something that is wrong. C. Physically abuses a patient. D. Psychologically abuses an patient. Correct answer. Does not do something that they should have done. Negligence occurs when a healthcare provider does not do something that they should have done. When you do not take vital signs, as assigned, a CNA can be negligent. 36. You are caring for a group of patients in the nursing home. The highest priority, greatest need for this group of patients is the need for which of the following? A. Esteem and respect. B. Self-determination. C. Justice. D. Safety. Correct answer, D. Safety. CNAs are personally accountable and responsible to maintain the safety of all patients. Safety takes priority over esteem, respect, self-determination and justice, although these other needs are also important. Safety is a high priority. 37. Match the abbreviation with the correct definition. A. Bid, at bedtime. B. Tid, tomorrow. C. AC, before meals. D. PC, patient care. Correct answer. C. A. C. Before meals. The abbreviation A. C. means before meals. Bid is twice a day, TID is three times a day and P. C. is after meals. 
38, which is not an acceptable abbreviation. A. D slash C. B. Tid. C. Bid. D. Q. I. D. Correct answer. D slash C. D slash C is not an acceptable abbreviation. It can be confused with both discharge and discontinue. 39. Your patient has a number of physical and emotional needs. Some of these needs are the need for safety, the need for fluids, and the need for mobility. Which of these needs must be addressed during all aspects of care? A. Safety. B. Nutrition. C. Mobility. D. Fluids. Correct answer. A. Safety. The safety needs must be addressed at all times and during all aspects of care, including when you are addressing the nutrition, fluids, and mobility. 40. Which of the following lists the five senses? A. Sight, hearing, taste, smell and common sense. B. Hearing, taste, smell, common sense and auditory. C. Sight, taste, smell, auditory and visual. D. Hearing, smell, taste, sight and touch. Correct answer. D. Hearing, smell, taste, sight and touch. The five senses are hearing, smell, taste, sight and touch. Auditory is the same as hearing and visual is the same as seeing. Common sense is not one of the five senses. 41. What senses do nursing assistants use to observe patients and residents? A. Sight, hearing and touch. B. Sight and hearing only. C. Sight and common sense only. D. Taste and hearing only. Correct answer. A. Sight, hearing and touch. The five senses are sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Nursing assistants use sight, hearing, and touch to observe their patients and residents. They use sight to read blood pressures and to see if the person is sleeping. They use hearing when they listen to the patient and hear their concerns. They use touch when they touch the patient's skin and feel that it is warm or wet. 42. Which of the following matches one of the five senses with an alternative term or definition? A. Sight, tactile. B. Hearing, olfactory. C. Taste, gustation. D. Touch, body language. Correct answer. C. Taste, gustation. The sense of taste is referred to as gustation. Many elderly people lose their sense of taste, or the gustatory sense. The sense of sight is a visual sense, our sense of hearing is often referred to as an auditory sense, and, lastly our sense of touch is referred to as a tactile sense. 43. Patients and residents who cannot move in their bed on their own should be turned at least a. once a day b. twice a day c. every two hours d. every four hours Correct answer, c. every two hours Patients and residents who cannot freely move about in bed must be turned at least every two hours in order to prevent pressure ulcers and skin breakdown. Some need even more frequent turning. For example, a patient who is incontinent of urine must be cleaned, dried, and turned more often. 44. You will be emptying urinary drainage bags at the end of your shift at 4 p.m. You must do which of the following? A. Wear gloves to empty the urinary drainage bags for HIV-positive patients. B. Wear gloves to empty the urinary drainage bags for all of the patients. C. Measure the urinary output in all of the drainage bags. D. Disconnect the tubing from the catheter before emptying them. Correct answer. B. Wear gloves to empty the urinary drainage bags for all of the patients. You must wear gloves when emptying all of the urinary drainage bags. This is part of our infection control procedures called standard precautions. You do not have to measure the urinary output for all patients, but you do have to measure it when the patient is having their intake and output measured and recorded.
CNAs cannot disconnect the tubing from the catheter because this jeopardizes the integrity of this sterile system. 45. You have measured the urinary output of your resident at the end of your 8-hour shift. The output is 25 ounces. You should do what next? A. Convert the number of ounces into CCS. B. Convert the number of ounces into CMS. C. Immediately report this poor output to the nurse. D. Know that 25 ounces of urine is too much in 8 hours. Correct answer, A. Convert the number of ounces into CCS. You have to mathematically convert the ounces into CCS because CCS is the unit of measurement that is used to record intake and output. This urinary output is within normal limits so there is no reason to immediately report it to the nurse. You must report urinary outputs of less than 30 cubic centimeters per hour. 46. How many CCS are there in 25 ounces? A. 250. B. 500. C. 750. D. 1000. Correct answer. C. 750. There are 30 cubic centimeters per ounce. There are 750 cubic centimeters in 25 ounces. 47. Your patient has finished a 12 ounce can of iced tea and 8 ounces of fresh orange juice. What will you record on the intake and output form for this patient's intake? A. 20 cubic centimeters. B. 20 centimeters. C. 600 cubic centimeters. D. 600 centimeters. Correct answer. C. 600 cubic centimeters. You will record 600 cubic centimeters of fluid intake. There are 600 cubic centimeters in 20 ounces, 8 plus 12 is equal to 20, of fluid intake. 48. Your patient ate an 8-ounce cup of Italian ice. How much will you record on the patient's intake and output form in terms of this patient's fluid intake? A. 240 cubic centimeters. B. 120 cubic centimeters. C. 8 cubic centimeters. D. 0 cubic centimeters because Italian ice is not a fluid. Correct answer. A. 240 cubic centimeters. You will record 240 cubic centimeters of fluid intake. Italian ice is considered a fluid. 49. A good diet must have all four food groups. The four food groups are A. Grains, dairy, vegetables, and fruits. B. Grains, dairy, fruits slash vegetables and meat. C. Carbohydrates, fats, dairy and meat. D. Carbohydrates, fats, grains and fruits. Correct answer. B. Grains, dairy, fruits slash vegetables and meat. The four food groups are dairy, meat, fruits slash vegetables and grains. 50. Dried beans are part of the underscore group of foods. A. Dairy. B. Vegetable. C. Meat. D. Grains. Correct answer. C. Meat. Dried beans are part of the meat group of foods. Dried beans are high in protein. 51. The need for safety is an example of a underscore need according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. A. Physical. B. Security. C. Self-actualization. D. Self-esteem. Correct answer. B. Security. The need for safety is an example of a security need according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 52. Your patient is concerned about their health insurance and the costs associated with their hospital care. Which of Maslow's needs is your patient expressing? A. Physical needs. B. Security needs. C. Self-actualization. D. Self-esteem and the esteem of other. Correct answer. B. Security needs. Health and life insurance are examples of security needs. 
53. Race is the acronym for the things you must do in the case of a fire. What is the first thing that you do if a fire breaks out? A. Restore the patients. B. Relate and report the fire. C. Rescue the patients. D. Run from the scene. Correct answer. C. Rescue the patients. Race is rescue, alarm, contain and extinguish, if you can. The first thing you do is R. The first thing you do is to rescue all the people that are in immediate danger. 54. You see a resident lying on the floor of the bathroom. You are not assigned to this patient. What is the first thing that you should do? A. Get the nursing assistant who is caring for the resident. B. Tell the nurse that the resident has had another seizure. C. Observe the resident for any injuries and call out for help. D. Nothing. This resident is not one of your assignments. Correct answer. C. Observe the resident for any injuries and call out for help. You should observe the resident for any injuries and call out for help. This is an emergency and you must act immediately even if the resident is not part of your assignment. You did not see this resident before they fell so you do not know that the person has had a seizure. 55. You are taking care of 12 residents today. One of your residents wants water, another needs help walking to the bathroom, another just stated that they have chest pain, and another is crying because his daughter did not visit him today. Which patient care problem must you deal with first? A. The water. B. Help to the bathroom. C. The chest pain. D. The crying person. Correct answer. C. The chest pain. The chest pain must be addressed immediately, before the other issues are dealt with. Chest pain is a very serious physical problem that could indicate that the resident is having a heart attack. The chest pain must be immediately reported to the nurse. 56. You are the CNA in a home health agency. You visit many elderly patients in their homes. Some have a history of falls. You have to identify environmental factors that place these home care patients at risk for new falls and repeated falls. Which of the following environmental factors should be corrected by the CNA in order to prevent falls in the home? A. Scatter rugs. B. No glare floors. C. Ventilation. D. Room temperature. Correct answer. A. Scatter rugs. Although all of these factors are considered environmental factors, it is scatter rugs that are very hazardous in the home. Many people slip, slide and fall on them. The installation of no glare floors can prevent falls but is outside the ability of the CNA to correct. Ventilation and room temperature have nothing to do with falls. 57. Tommy R., your 68-year-old patient, is at risk for falls. He has fallen three times in the last month. You should keep Tommy's underscore in order to prevent him from falling again. A. Bedside rails up at all times. B. Bed in the low position. C. Call bell within reach. D. Family members in the room at all time. Correct answer. C. Call bell within reach. The CNA should keep all patient call bells within the patient's reach so they can call for help and assistance when they need it. This prevents falls. Although low beds are highly useful because they decrease the extent of injury when a patient falls, they do not prevent falls. It is not realistic to expect family members to remain in Tommy's room at all times. Lastly, side rails do not prevent falls and, in fact, they increase the severity of a fall when the patient climbs over them. Also, side rails to prevent falls are considered a restraint and patients often get entrapped in side rails. 58. You will be escorting a patient to the operating room on a stretcher. In order to prevent this patient from falling, you must do which of the following? A. Make sure the locks are not locked as you move the patient onto the stretcher from the bed. B. Use a safety belt or strap on the patient throughout their escort to the operating room. 
C. Put the bed in low position as you move the patient onto the stretcher from the bed. D. All of the above. Correct answer. B. Use a safety belt or strap on the patient throughout their escort to the operating room. The CNA must place a safety belt or strap on the patient throughout their escort to the operating room in order to prevent the patient from falling. This type of safety belt is not treated as a restraint because it is a routine part of care when using a stretcher. The bed must be in the high position so it is level with the stretcher when you are moving the patient from the bed to the stretcher. It is very important that you lock the wheels of a stretcher and a wheelchair before you transfer a patient into or onto it. Falls occur when CNAs fail to lock these pieces of equipment. 59. Albert B. is incontinent of urine. He also wears glasses and hearing aid. His underscore leads to his risk of falls. A. Incontinence and loss of vision. B. Loss of vision. C. Incontinence. D. Loss of hearing. Correct answer. A. Incontinence and loss of vision. Albert B. is at risk for falls because of two factors. His incontinence and his loss of vision are two risk factors associated with falls. This is the best choice for this question. 60. All hospitals and nursing homes are mandated to have the goal of a restraint-free environment. The best way to achieve this goal is to A. Ban the use of all restraints under all circumstances. B. Limit restraints to only those situations when falls cannot be prevented. C. Keep all bedside rails up for all patients during the nighttime hours. D. Use no skid socks and sheets to prevent falls from chairs. Correct answer. B. Limit restraints to only those situations when falls cannot be prevented. All hospitals and nursing homes are mandated by Chicago and State Departments of Health to have the goal of a restraint-free environment. This does not mean that no restraints can ever be used under any circumstances. It means that all healthcare facilities must have this as a goal. In order to move toward the goal of a restraint-free environment, restraints should be used only when all preventive measures have failed and the patient is in danger of injury. When a restraint is necessary, the hospital or nursing home must use the restraint that is least restrictive to the patient but can also prevent injuries. Congratulations! You have completed the test. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more resources.